Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 60 of SQL Server video series. In this video, we'll discuss about correlated subqueries in SQL Server. In part 59 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of SQL Server. We also discussed about how subqueries can be replaced using joins. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this session, we'll discuss about correlated subqueries. Correlated subqueries are very simple and easy to understand. Now, if the subquery depends on the outer query for its values, then that subquery is called as a correlated subquery. Let's look at an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Now, before we look at a correlated subquery, let's look at a non-correlated subquery. We'll be using the same tables that we have used in the previous session of this video series, TBL products and TBL product sales. TBL products table contains the product data, and TBL product sales table contains sales-related data. So every time we sell a product, an entry will be made into this table. Now, let's say I want to retrieve all the products that has not been sold at least once. How do I write that query? Obviously, whenever we make a sale, an entry is made into TBL product sales table. Now, if you look at the sample data that we have, we have sold product with ID 2 and 3, meaning laptop 10 desktops. We haven't sold a TV at least once. So I want to retrieve uh, the products that we have not sold at least once. So how do I do that? So select I want the ID, name, and description. We'll, we'll write those columns later. First, let's write the from clause. Uh, so TBL products select from TBL products. Now, I have written the from clause first because I'll get IntelliSense for the column name, so it'll be easier to write, type. So select ID, name, and description. OK, so we want these three columns from this table where the ID column in TBL products table not n in this table. Okay, product ID not in this table. So what I will do basically is select product ID from TBL product sales. And since there are duplicate product IDs, I'm going to use the distinct keyword. Okay, this is the same query that we have discussed about in the previous video session. Now look at this. You know, how does this query gets executed? Now the subquery gets executed first. So if you look at this query, this subquery can be executed independently. So when I execute that query, I get two and three. Now we are saying select ID name description from TBL products, where ID not n, two comma three, which should give us the product with ID is equal to one. Okay, this is an example of a non-correlated subquery. In a non-correlated subquery, the subquery is not a dependent on this outer query for its values. The subquery can be executed independently on its own. Okay, Once the subquery is executed, the results of this subquery is then substituted within those parentheses for use by the outer query. Okay, So in a non-correlated subqueries, subqueries usually gets executed only once. Okay, now let's look at an example of a non-correlated subquery. Again, we'll be using the same examples that we have discussed about in the previous session. Let's say, for example, I want to find out, you know, uh, all the products that we have sold and the total quantity. Okay, so basically, uh, we have three products, and I want to find out all the three product names and the total quantity, total, you know, quantity that we have sold. So how do we do that? So basically, I want the name and then the total quantity. Now, to retrieve the total quantity, I want to use, let's say, subquery. Okay, so I'm going to open and close parentheses. Select, now we want, you know, the total quantity that we have sold, so I'm going to use sum aggregate function. And sum of, I want to aggregate this quantity sold column. So quantity sold from TBL product sales table. Okay, where product ID is equal to, now, for now, let's substitute question mark there from TBL products table. So where is name column coming from? The name column is coming from TBL products table. And I want to sum up this quantity sold for each product. So the product ID is going to come from TBL products table. OK, so every row that we select from the outer query, so first TV is selected, let's say, for example, then what is this subquery? Look at this subquery that we have here. Select sum of quantities sold 
sum of quantities sold from TBL products where product ID is equal to, look at this, we are looking up the product ID in TBL products table. So every time we select a row from the outer query, now the subquery gets executed low. So when I select this row first, it then executes this subquery when that row is being selected, okay, where product ID is equal to TBL products dot ID. Here the ID is one, it looks up that here we don't have an ID, so sum for TVs will be null. And then when it when the query executes the second row, what happens? It comes to the subquery, looks up in TBL product sales table, is there an entry? Uh, is there a product with ID 2? Yes, there is. It tries to sum up that. There's only one row, so we only get seven. And then finally, when it comes to three, okay, product ID is three, so there are three rows, so it's going to add five, four, and nine, so 18 will be the sum. So if you look at this now, can I execute this subquery independently out of, you know, independently of the outer query? No, I can't. Look at this. When I try to execute that, I get an error because the multi-part identifier TBL products dot ID cannot be bound. Now, a correlated subquery will get executed for every row, you know, for the outer query. In the outer query for every row, you know, this subquery gets executed. Okay, so look at this. When I execute this query together, I get TV, laptop, and desktop, and I get their sum as well. Okay, now I don't have a column name here, but let's go ahead and give a meaningful column name using alias. So let's say quantity sold. Now we get a column name. Okay, so that's a correlated subquery because this subquery is dependent on this outer query for its value, for the value for this column product ID. Okay, so that's a correlated subquery. So if the subquery depends on the outer query for its values, then the subquery is called as correlated subquery. In the where clause, look at this, in the where clause of the subquery, this product ID column gets its value from TBL products table, and TBL products table is not present within the subquery. Okay, it's present only within the outer query. So this subquery is dependent on the outer query for its value, in this case for product ID. So here the subquery is dependent on the outer query for its value, hence the subquery is a correlated subquery. Correlated subqueries get executed once for every row that is selected by the outer query. Correlated subquery cannot be executed independently of, uh, of the outer query, but whereas a non-correlated subquery can be executed independently uh, of the outer query. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.